Let's talk about team reports. For the longest time, I've wanted a way that I could use them as a large scale scouting tool. But due to some clunkiness with the way that FM is and some of the sheer number of clicks it takes things to actually work, it just wasn't particularly viable. Or was it? So this is my attempt at making it into a usable scouting method, building on some of my youth international scouting stuff from last year. But this time it is laser focused. So instead of wading through 2000 E rated player reports, hoping to find a diamond in the rough, you're sort of thrown into a bathtub full of diamonds and occasionally have to discard some moissanite and cubic zirconia. I'm going to try to cram as much information as I can into the shortest time possible, as I know your time is valuable. So let's jump in. So this is a brand new fresh save that has been simmed five years into the future to make sure that we have lots of regens for us to find today because I'm not just going to tell you what to do I'm going to show you it and we're going to go through the entire season I'm going to show you how it works on a large scale we have worldwide scouting but don't worry if you don't because one of the things I like about this is you don't actually need worldwide scouting to make this work I actually only have the Danish league loaded for this but I do have 110,000 players loaded through a custom database setup long story short it lets you turn on loads of players the club still produce regens to keep the database topped up and it's a lot quicker than having a load of leagues set to playable especially if you're doing a one club save I'll link to my video about it in the description if you're interested interested, but essentially more players equals more players to scout. The other thing I really like about this compared to my other method is that you don't need like 10, 15, 25 scouts to actually make this work properly and efficiently. Uh, we have six and this is going to work out just perfect. First thing I've done is I've gone in and I've cancelled all of my recruitment focuses because you're tacky and I hate you. Okay, you see me after class. You can leave them on if you want, but it might make it harder to distinguish the reports we want from those in your scouting inbox. I've also put myself in charge of assigning scouts and handling scouting meetings. That way I'm in total control and they don't try to start any recruitment focuses behind my back. And as for the scouting inbox itself, I have the settings for that set up thusly. Now, last year when I did that video about scouting, I had a lot of questions from people saying they were getting individual scout reports sent straight into their inbox rather than being in an actual big scout report. So the way that you avoid that basically is by not having anything going into here. This stuff is fine as you'll see why in a minute but you just don't want to have anything being sent directly to your inbox otherwise you'll get a report for each player and that could get messy for the purposes of this i've also got all the agent offers turned off completely and i've got the frequency of reports set to one week each time that should be fine for this method the last thing to look at here is the advanced filters and again i've gone a bit overzealous here just to ensure that certain things do not sneak through into our inbox the only thing i would suggest a hundred percent of the time that you should have switched off is this started scouting player i don't need to know that the kettle has just been turned on let me know when it's boiled so i can make myself a brew. The costs associated with this are also pretty bloody minimal because the game will literally not let you get any team reports from outside your scouting range, which is great because then you can't accidentally spend £750,000 scouting players in Brazil when you're in the Hungarian second division, as I did on stream. Well, you can catch me live Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday, so drop a follow there too. Flawless shoehorn. So now we're all set up and we're ready to begin. And now comes the slightly time-consuming part, but believe me, it is worth it. I assume most of you are familiar with the team report function. If you're not, basically, you go to any club you like. I've just chosen Spar Trek Janava because reasons. Go into here, hit team report, and then you can get a team report from one of the various squads that the club might have, be it under-19s or their first team squad. You can assign it to any scout you like. It's no big deal. Then either the next day or a day or two, you'll get a little report in your inbox, which will just have some information about the team. However, if you then go back into that team's squads and look, you'll now see that you have a little bit more information about some of the players' attributes, as well as some predictions about their abilities and their potential. I've used this in the past to get some quick knowledge on players, but it doesn't feel very scalable because you have to click through several menus just to get one team report set up and you still don't even know if the club itself in there actually has any players in, say, their under-19 squad. What we needed was a way to zero in on clubs that were not only producing players recently, so they'd actually still be around, but they were also producing good players. It's all very well going to the World Youth Intake screen and scrolling through here and looking at the clubs, but the thing is, most of these players, if you were to scout them, would be players that you'd never want to sign, so it's a bit of a waste of time and it doesn't allow you to narrow things down. The other downside is that even if you did find a set of clubs that you like the look of and want to get team reports on them, you'd still have to go to each club individually and get a team report on their under-19s because you can't do it from this menu. You have to do it all the way through here. It's just tedious. So how do we find those clubs? Well, with a bit of logic. As an example, we're just going to use South America and in this case, Colombia, because it's a hotbed of talent. But this will work for most nations that actually have players in these squads. Those of you that have seen my international youth team scouting video from last year will, of course, recognize this screen. Probably recognize this view as well. Very useful, but I'll link it in the description because it will come in very useful for this as well. But what we're actually bothered in here is not so much the players, but the teams that the players are coming from. Because as you can see, teams like Atletico Nacional are listed here multiple times. They've had multiple players in these squads. Now, obviously, they produce good players, so that makes sense. But it also means that they are producing good players recently, which is what we're really interested in. Now, some nations, you will literally get youth teams for them every single year without fail, but a lot of them you won't. And that's why this is important. So what you're going to need to do is sort it by the club so we can see which teams have got multiple players in these lists. Then just right click on the club, go down to team report in here. But you'll notice from this menu, for some reason, it will actually let you get a team report of the under 20 side. 
I don't know why it lets you do this here, but not in half of the other menus in the game, but we will not knock it because it's beautiful for us. For a lot of clubs, it's worth doing the same thing with their first team squad in case any youth players have been promoted to it already and might be absolute worldies in there too. So just work your way down. Any club that's got more than one player in this list is definitely worth getting a team report on for me because it indicates that there was probably more players at that club as well that you might not be seeing yet because they're either injured, different nationalities, or just not quite good enough to get in the right national teams yet. Or they might be like 15 and have only just spawned into the game. That being said, it is still worth a occasionally with some of the bigger nations that you know are producing talent to just select the whole damn lot and get a scout report on those guys as well just to give your scouts something to do while these other guys are bringing through those team reports for you but it's not a necessity and i've not used the proper scouting like that for a while now but that will just stop you from missing out on the occasional gem that spawns at i don't know a random lower league spanish side it's always worth looking at the other 23s as well because there might be some teams in here that you know for a fact have probably got some good players knocking about in their under 20 side and at the end of the day they're always worth a scout because if there are no players in that team for whatever reason we can nip that in the bud before before we actually waste our time scouting them. But we'll talk about that in a second. But now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and go through all the squads that I pretty much want to in world football. And yeah, it takes a little while, but believe me, it's worth it. And then just get scout reports on either their... B teams, first teams, usually try to go for the under 20 sides if they have one. Some teams don't have them at all and their youth players go straight into the first team. That's fine too. It actually makes it easier for you in a way. And don't worry if you actually end up setting up over 365 of these because we're going to get rid of some of them in a minute anyway. If you don't have worldwide scouting at the club you're at, doesn't matter. Just go after the clubs that are in the scouting range that you do have. Say it's only Europe, just target European clubs. And in that case, you might even be able to go after some of the clubs that have only produced one players for these squads just to pump up the reports. You can cast a slightly wider net, weirdly. So that took me about half an hour-ish to get that set up. You'll probably get quicker with it uh, as you do it a little bit more often. But one of the problems you can run into is that some squads uh, literally have four different teams at the same club and you're never going to know quite which those players are actually in because some of them could be completely blank at any given time. So what's important for us at this point is now that we have those reports set up, before we do anything else, we want to narrow it down immediately to save our scouts wasting some time. So now you come over to your scouting center and go to team report priority screen, which is a screen that you'll have probably never even looked at because why would have you? Uh, but the key thing about this screen is it'll allow you to add custom columns to it. What we're interested in is the squad size column. And if you can't find that just out of interest, it's actually the one that it'll be in finances and comparison. And it'll be somewhere around about here. That's what you want to actually add. This stuff is just excellent on the side. So now what we can do is we can now filter this by the size of the squads. And the cool thing is it doesn't count the grayed out players that you see in there. So if you see zero, that squad's just grayed out players and nothing else, or it's totally blank. But the best thing is now we can just select all of these squads that have zero players in them or one, because I feel like that's a bit of a waste of time as well. Select them all, hit cancel assignment, and boom, we've just taken that from 407 scout reports down to 378 and that saved our scouts nearly a month of scouting time just like that bear in mind you will still see the occasional blank report i don't know why it's just weird like that. So now that all the setup is completely done, and that is genuinely the hardest bit right now already out of the way, just play the save like you would normally and wait for the scout reports and the team reports to slowly start rolling in. It's going to take a few days for the first one to come through, but after that, they should be one a day like clockwork until they're completely exhausted. Much like your scouts traveling around the world to just about every country imaginable. So once you start getting those reports through, they'll look a little bit like this. Some of them won't have this bit underneath, but that's fine too. All you're interested in is that you get the report. Then you click the name of the club here. If it's a youth team, it'll take you straight to their youth team. If if it's a pro team, obviously, you'll have to then navigate into it from here to find the various squads or whatever, but you'll be presented with this. All of a sudden, you'll have a little bit more information about some of those players. Again, the view that I'm using here will be in the description, and this is where it gets interesting. At this point, I would then just highlight and get a scout report on any player that looks vaguely interesting. Now, what that means to you will vary depending on the level of club that you're at. And when I say scout report specifically, I mean report and then for one week, not full knowledge. And the best thing as well is if you're a slightly smaller club, there's going to be way more players that are going to potentially look like world beaters to you than there would be, say, you were playing as like an elite level late stage Champions League team. But if that is you, I would say any player that's got four star potential on this initial thing is definitely worth a one week scouting report. If you're a little bit lower than that, I'd say any player that has anything into that fifth star of the potential is absolutely fine to go after. If you're kind of any other club from that point, I would say just go straight after any player that's got the full five star potential because there'll be tons of them. So then after a little while of doing this, it's only been two weeks, so we've only really only looked at some Austrian and Belgian sides. All of a sudden, as you're doing that, your inbox will start to look a little bit like this. And you can see why this would be better than scouting through through 80 different E-rated players. Out of this entire thing, there's only one guy that's even been given a D rating. Also, you'll note there's a few slightly older players in here too. That's because when you get those scout reports, sometimes your scout will see a player at the club that they might like this in a different squad and go, you know what, take a little closer look at this too. And the way I would then sort of triage this is obviously the first thing to do really would be any player that you don't have extensive knowledge on, just select them all up to that point and just hit and get a scout report on them again. Send them around for another week, acknowledge and move on with it just to narrow it down straight away. Any players now that you do have extensive knowledge of, 
also send them around for another week. That sounds stupid, I realize, but there is a reason for it. So for some reason, and I do not know why this is, extensive knowledge, as far as I'm aware, is supposed to be 100% scouted. Except it isn't, because I've noticed that if you then take any player that's just suddenly ticked over to extensive and you send them around for another week, you suddenly, when you finally get that report back, which usually is a week later, all of a sudden, their star ratings for ability and potential are so much more accurate to what they're going to be like when they actually join you than they are before. Often slightly lower, but occasionally slightly higher as well. So what I'm now going to do is play through the rest of this season with very little attention on the matches, mostly just the scouting stuff, and add any players that I like and go and triage them to a shortlist. And hopefully in, well, a few hours, I'll have some stuff to show you about what you could have got over the course of that season. Obviously, you'd be picking them up along the way, but I'm going to do it in one big chunk instead. So we are now back. It is July 16th the following year. I would try to keep it to under 365 so that you don't sort of end up spilling into the next years. But for the purposes of this, I was willing to let it sort of play out uh, as things go. We didn't even do that well in the league as it goes, but I wasn't really paying attention to that. My main focus was on players and scouting of players. So let's show you how that went. This is our shortlist. Uh, <laughs> you can see that things have gone reasonably well. 204 players I've, I've found and kept on this shortlist, but it's not like it's just a couple of A-rated players. It's a lot of... A, a lot, a lot, a lot of A-rated players that we've sort of stumbled upon. Now, obviously, if you were doing this properly, you'd have actually tried to pick some of these guys up. I just wanted to sort of show them all off to you at this point, really, because I didn't want to bother signing them. Some of them are a lot older, of course, which is fine. But you'll see there's some 16-year-old guys in here with that extra half star in the five-star rated. They're fully scouted. They've had the extra scouting on top of that. Some of these guys are monsters. To give you an idea of some of the quality that you can find, for example, these two chaps here, obviously they're both 21, but that's beside the point. Um, Zelkovic and Carrasco. 6.2 million pounds, Carrasco, is his release clause. Do you know what? As much as he's got a massive wage, which is obviously something that's worth looking at, man is probably worth 6.2 million pounds, isn't he? Let's let's be clear here. And the same thing applies to uh, Zelkovic here. He's probably worth the 6.8 million pounds, particularly as he's only on two grand a week. But those are slightly more developed players, and you possibly could have found those guys anyway. Some of these guys, however, things get a little bit different. Players like this guy, Kasper Filipovic, like young Polish player, only 16 years old, but he is absolutely stacked to the hilt. Probably, you know, 100 caps of Poland in his future. And you could pick him up for like probably about two and a half million in truth. This guy here out of the South African leagues, only 17 years old. He's like Chimodzi. Again, I think I'd be happy to drop about £250,000 on a player of this kind of quality because I feel like future South African international without a doubt. And that is important to me because it shows that the sort of players available that you can get for pretty much every level, whether you are at the sort of team that could actually afford to drop £10.5 million on this guy, uh, Mario Alberto Chacon, who probably will be a future long-time Mexico international, but £10 million is a lot to drop on a player. Or you're more in the range of a team that can drop sort of £2 million on someone like Lucien Toma. Do or do not use it if you want to. It's one of those things, really. I just thought I'd put this out here in case anyone was interested and... Uh, yeah, so hopefully this has helped out a couple of people. If it has, that's awesome. Drop a like, subscribe for, well, not more stuff like this. I don't really get the opportunity to make videos like this specifically very often because, you know, how often do you find stuff like this, I guess. But regardless, um, hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.